one of the things that can be relied upon in life is that you are related to your relatives. And what you get is the more closely related you are, the more genes you share in common with them. On a statistical level, identical twins share 100% of their genes, full siblings 50%, half siblings 25%. This is exactly something that's going to be covered in the catch-up section this week. If you're not comfortable with this stuff, this sort of thing will be reviewed in more detail. Okay, so the closer a relative is to you, the more copies of the more genes they share in common with you. So suddenly you've got this issue, you're an identical twin, and your identical sibling has the same genes that you do. Individual selection, you will be just as successful as passing on copies of your genes into the next generation if you forego reproducing to make it possible for your identical twin to do so. Because on a level of just sheer numbers of copies of genes in the next generation, they are equivalent. And sometimes you will thus get behavior which really decreases the reproductive success of an individual in order to enhance the success of a relative. But you've got a constraint there, which is all of your relatives don't share all your genes with you. They have differing degrees of relatedness. And what that winds up producing is another factor, another observation, one of the great like witty geneticists of all time, a guy named Haldane, who apparently once in a bar was trying to explain this principle to somebody and came up and said, I will gladly lay down my life for two brothers or eight cousins. And that's the math of the relatedness. You passing on one copy of your genes to the next generation is from the sheer mathematics of just how evolution is going to play out over the generations is exactly equivalent as giving up your life for eight cousins to be able to each pass on a copy of their genes because you share one eighth with each of them and it winds up being a whole org. And it's that math. And out of that, you get something that makes perfect sense instantly, which is evolution selects for organisms cooperating with their relatives. Something along those lines. And thus we have the second building block known as kin selection, inclusive fitness, kin selection. First building block, individual selection, passing on copies of your own genes as a way to maximize future success. Second version, helping out relatives. Helping out relatives in terms of increasing their reproductive success with this vicious mathematical logic, which is you know, one identical twin, two, half sibling, two full siblings, eight cousins, and so on, as a function of degree of relatedness. And what this begins to explain is a whole world in animal behavior of animals being obsessed with kinship. Animals being fully aware of who is related to who, and what sorts of ways animals being utterly aware of you cooperate with relatives, but as a function of how closely related they are. Animals put us in social anthropology in kinship terms and could you marry the daughter of your uncle's third wife or whatever to shame in terms of how much a lot of social animals deal with relatedness. So inclusive fitness, kin selection. Here would be evidence for it. Here's one example. Very cool study done some years back by a couple, Seyfarth and Cheney, University of Pennsylvania, looking at vervet monkeys. And these were vervet monkeys out in Tanzania, I believe. And what they did was a whole bunch of these vervet monkeys were sitting around. And they, the researchers, had made really high quality recordings of various vocalizations from the monkeys over time. So they had the sound of each animal giving an alarm call, giving a friendly gesture call, giving a whatever. And what they would then do is hide a microphone inside some bushes and play the sound of one of the infants from the group giving an alarm call. So what does the mother of that infant do? She instantly gets agitated and looks over at the bush. That's her child, all of that. How to know that everyone else in that vervid group understands kin selection? What does everybody else do? They all look at the mother. That's whoever's mother. What is she going to do next? They understand the relatedness. And they understand what the response will be. All the other vervids look at the mother at that point. Whoa, I'm sure glad that's not my kid giving an alarm call from the bushes. They understand kinship. Another version of that that came out in these studies. 
So you've got two females, each of whom has a kid, a daughter, or whatever, and female A and female B, and one day female A does something absolutely rotten to female B. And later that day, the child of female B is more likely than chance to do something rotten to the child of female A. They're keeping track of not only revenge, but not revenge on the individual who did something miserable to you, but displaced by one degree of reproduction, keeping track of kinship. Animals can do this. All sorts of primate species can do this. And as we'll see, all sorts of other species can do this also. There's that caveat again. All sorts of other species want to figure out who their cousins are. They don't want to figure out. Evolution has sculpted an ability to optimize behavior along lines of relatedness in all sorts of species. So how would natural selection play out in this realm of kin selection? I will lay down my life for eight cousins. And that's just sort of obvious there by now. How would sexual selection play out in this realm? I am willing to expend great amounts of energy to convince people that my sibling is incredibly hot. And with any chance, then passing on more copies of genes. That would be inclusive fitness, kin selection in both cases, decreasing your own reproductive potential by way of being killed by a predator to save the eight cousins or having to spend so much time haranguing about your sibling. Doing that in order to increase the reproductive success of relatives where you were willing to give up more energy and potential on your part, the more closely related the individual is. So you throw those two pieces together, and you're suddenly off and running with explaining a lot of animal behavior. Individual selection, none of this for the good of the species, maximizing the number of copies of your own genes. And the easiest way, the most straightforward, is you yourself maximizing reproduction. Uh, foundation number two to the whole thing, kin selection. Sometimes the best way of leaving more copies of genes in the next generation is using up your own reproductive potential for going to help relatives as a function of degree of relatedness.